if you are thinking about breaking into tech, there's honestly no better time to get into AI and machine learning. In 2025 and 2026, AI is going to be the hashtag one greatest innovation in the industry. Just look at the numbers if you don't believe me. The Future of Jobs report 2025 has just been released. Let me break it down for you. Now, these are the fastest growing jobs. We've got big data specialists, fintech engineers, machine and AI learning specialists. An average data scientist in the US earns around 130k US dollars per year, while a machine learning and an AI engineer earns upwards of 150k to 170k US dollars. In India, the numbers are quite similar. An average data scientist earns around 10 to 25 lakhs per annum, while an experienced or a fresher machine learning engineer or an AI engineer earns around 30 to 40 to 50 lakhs per year. At each of the top leading companies in India as well as in US startups like myself. But here's the catch. Everyone is taking the same online courses and solving the same YouTube tutorials for projects. What's the difference between you and a million other candidates? In fact, a recent survey shows that 70% of hiring managers prefer actual real-world experiences over cookie-cutter projects and certifications. So if you want to stand out among a sea of million candidates, you need to build projects that solve actual problems and show recruiters that you understand software engineering principles, machine learning principles, AI and LLM principles like clean code, version controlling, testing, how to use LLMs and AI, all the machine learning algorithms, all the LLMs, transformer architecture, everything. So you need to stop building projects from these follow along tutorials that add zero value to your life or your resume. You need to build projects that are going to shock the interviewers. So in this video, I'm going to share three project ideas that go way beyond the basics. These aren't just your regular predict house prices or classified digits. These are actual project ideas that has helped me in my life and can actually get you hired. I'll break down all the software engineering skills and the machine learning skills and the AI and LLM skills you need for each one of them. So stay tuned and watch it till the end. So if you want to ride the AI wave and land a high paying job, whether in the US or in India like right now, Let's dive right in and let's start building right up. So let me tell you about my very first real world machine learning project, Plant Doctor. The idea basically came from a personal struggle. As you know, I really love having house plants and I have a lot of them. This is one. This is another one. But as you can see, this is a plant that has a bit of brown leaves some brown spots and earlier there were even longer leaves with even longer spots so i knew that something was wrong with my plan but i had no idea that what exactly was wrong i was just searching frantically online and trying to understand that what exactly is going on and asking people but nobody actually knew i realized there has to be a better way for regular people to get quick reliable plant care advice and save their plants and that was how the first idea of plant doctor was born the concept is very simple you just take a photo snap a selfie of any of these plants whichever plant you want information on and then upload to a website and the app is going to tell you everything it's going to match the plant to the entire database of plants available online is going to tell you what's wrong with the plant and how to fix it. You can also save your plant's medical history and get frequent reminders for watering or taking care of plants or giving some medicine, changing the mid tea, anything. If you need to, you can also hook your app up to Amazon and easily order any plant care products from Amazon as well. So let me just brief what are the features of this project that we are going to implement today. And what are the steps we can take to implement this? First is definitely the complete project setup. We are going to use Django for the entire project setup from start to the end. So the features are upload plant videos and get AI diagnosis. Second, track multiple plants with multiple profiles. Third, get treatment recommendation with step-by-step -step instructions. Fourth, set care reminders for watering and fertilization. Fifth, view diagnosis history to understand what all has been the medical history of the plant. And lastly, is mobile and web responsive design so that it can work across different kinds of machines. For backend, we are going to use Django and the entire framework. And for front end, we are going to use Bootstrap to make it much more responsive and good looking. I do want to mention here, Educative.io has helped me to create this project because I did not know about Django framework and I did not know about Bootstrap. So I learned all the concepts from Educative.io. They have amazing projects on reactive programming, Django, Spring Boot, AI, Generative AI, Agentic AI, System Design, everything. 
and I recommend checking it out because it is really really awesome. There is a 70% discount going on right now and with my link you can get additional 20% off. First we will set up our project using Django and install all the dependencies inside a virtual environment. A virtual environment keeps our project dependencies organized and separate from the other projects. So Django is our web framework, Pillow helps with image processing and OpenAI is for AI integration. So second step is going to be where we describe the structure of our data using Django models. So these are the core entities of our application. These are the plant model, the care routine model and the diagnosis model. So the plant model's purpose is to store information about each plant such as its name, species and location. Second is care routine model. The purpose is to track the care routine for each plant including watering and light conditions. And the key fields are plant which has a one is to one relationship with the plant model ensuring that each plant has a unique care routine. Second is watering frequency and light condition. Thirdly is the diagnosis model. This model stores the results of AI diagnosis including identified issues and treatment recommendations. So the key fields of the plant obviously a foreign key linking the diagnosis to a specific plant. Secondly is image, the uploaded image used for diagnosis and thirdly is identified issues, confidence score, severity etc. In step 3 we integrate AI into our application by using the GPT-4 OpenAI's Vision API. This step is crucial because it helps us to analyze the plant images and give detailed diagnosis based on all the information that we have provided. So let's break down the code in AIService.py to see how it goes. First part is initializing the AI service with the OpenAI API key. You can provide a free API key from here. Yeah, just go in here and get the API key and set it in .env file which is our environment variable. Secondly is image coding. Convert the uploaded image to a base64 encoded string for the API transmission. Third is analyzing plant images. So purpose is to basically analyze the plant image and provide a diagnosis using AI. And fourth is calling the OpenAI API. Send the prompt and image to OpenAI API for analysis. And lastly is parsing and validation of the response. So this AI integration step is crucial for helping the plant doctor app to provide accurate diagnosis given the plant images that we have uploaded. And the secondly is all the information like location, the amount of watering, where did you purchase it, what is the kind of fertilization needed, etc. I personally use YouTube a lot to know about all these tutorials, Django tutorials, system design tutorial, everything. So there's class for Django, there's Django tutorial for beginners, just one hour video. So suppose you are looking at this video and then you are like stuck, you don't know what to do. Then oftentimes you can do is use NodeGPT because NodeGPT is going to help you to provide a summary of this. And oftentimes if I don't feel like watching the entire video and I need to know some kind of information and I know that this video might have it, so then just ask it in here. So if I'm just asking here, what's the video about it's going to provide me a detailed analysis of what the video is about i would say like go through one video like go through educative.io's courses definitely but then when you are before implementing if you are stuck if you're thinking about what exactly we could do differently these all videos are like six hours one hour two hours long so it's too much so you just need to use no so it provides a summary of the entire video as well here and this is the entire transcript of the video you can download this transcript as well in SRT format with timestamp without timestamp. And you can easily understand what's going on here, whether the thing that you are looking for is in it or not. I do want to draw attention to the fact that I did not make the entire app in a weekend. Obviously, it's not possible. I learned about Bootstrap and Django from Educative.io and then I by coded the application and provided all the necessary information and, in, and regularly kept up with it using Emergent.sh. The link is in description. It is an amazing app where you can add extra features, where you can modify the UI, where you can build whatever you want. So this application, it was built with the help of Emergent.sh, but later on, I added a lot of changes myself. In step four, we basically focus on building the responsive HTML website for our app. This involves creating responsible HTML interfaces using Bootstrap to ensure an amazing user experience because user experience is very important for any kind of application. So first comes base template. So the purpose is to provide a consistent layout and styling for all the pages. It includes Bootstrap for responsive design and font awesome for the icons. Secondly is the home page which serves as the entry point to the application showcasing its main features and providing quick access to key actions. Thirdly is the diagnosis plant page 
which allows users to upload a plant image for diagnosis. In step 5, we are going to add smart features to our plant doctor app such as session management, caching and managing care reminders. First comes session management. So this get or create session key manages user sessions without requiring user account. Second is the home page. So the purpose is to display an overview of the user's plants, recent diagnosis and upcoming reminders on the home page. Now comes step 6 which is probably the most important part. We configure the plant doctor app for deployment. This involves setting up environment variables, static files and database configurations to ensure that the app runs smoothly in a production environment. If your app is really not out there, then where exactly is it? It's useless if it's with you. You need to put it out there so that everyone can see it. First comes the environment variables. Load the environment variables from a .env file. Secondly is the security settings. So these configure the security settings for this app. Thirdly is the static and media files. So these are the configured paths for static and media files because you need to provide all the images and the pages, static files like HTML, etc. to the deployment environment so that the production has it. Now that I have shared all the information needed for this plant doctor app, many people are going to build it, right? So what different can you do? Can you suggest some other changes that you could do, similar apps that could solve some problems that you have in your current life? One more project idea I can give you is Mood Tunes project. I was looking at playlists and I was very sad and so I was searching for certain songs that could help me cheer up. So then this idea came to my mind. It's a very fun project, very chill project, but a project that is real world and based on real world problems. So Mood Tunes is an app where you can upload a selfie and it guesses your mood, whether you're angry, sad, happy, neutral or anything. Another idea I can come up with is based on again a personal experience of myself. I had gone to a friend's place with an artist and who has, loves to collect art pieces. And I couldn't understand many of the pieces that were present in his room and I really wanted to make an impression. So wouldn't it be awesome if we could just click a selfie of that particular art piece and then upload it to the application and the application would tell you what this piece is really significant and why is it significant, who made this piece and even give you recommendations of similar pieces so you could continue the conversation with the person. So all the best, definitely like, subscribe and comment your project ideas. I'll take a look and answer as soon as possible.